Previously on Save Like a Bear, every goal is a financial goal. It's that time of the content calendar again where I tenuously try to connect personal finance topics to Tom Holland and or Spider-Man. Under ruse keeps gate crashing the party we're having. I try telling King Holly to leave, but it's no use. I don't wanna go. I don't wanna go. Let's examine anyway how to fracking achieve the exceptional when you don't think you're exceptional all via lessons from our favourite entertainers who've touched the burning flagpole first. Who said personal finance isn't fun? Welcome back subscribers to this whirly gig of fun, or if you're new, I only share my research and experiments for funsies, so never take the launch pad of analysis on any of my YouTube channels or the podcast or blog etc as formal advice. If you don't know, I made a video once about Spider-Man that people seem to like, and then I made a video and a podcast episode about Tom Holland and how people monetize their Instagram, and people seem to really like that too. Oh, and now I feel like I've been taken hostage by either Tom Holland fans or the YouTube algorithm or my podcast download stats and that I can't make anything that doesn't mention his name. You've got a lot of explaining to do. No, 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 this I'm also trying to stick to my niche of personal finance. By all means subscribe if you're on the edge of your seat and can't wait to find out if I ever escape this life of misery. I'm in the equivalent of content creators jail but let's be honest it's a pretty comfy place to be. I mean if you're going to get stuck between a rock and a hard place that hard place should probably be Tom Holland's abs. <laughs> So if you are a fan, you're going to learn something about money today, I hope. And if you're not a fan, you should still learn some financial principles that will serve you for life. It's a win-win for everyone, don't you think? Yes, I do. What makes Peter Parker exceptional? And how does he achieve his goal of becoming an Avenger? I believe that everyone is exceptional, but that most of us talk ourselves out of doing exceptional things. Don't forget step seven. Step seven. Don't do any of that. So the number one thing you need to know about how to watch Spider-Man is that it's about who we are without money or connections. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. Without spoiling too much, Peter's defining moment in Spider-Man Homecoming is lifting a building off his back. Who doesn't like a good metaphor about how it feels to meet your girlfriend's dad for the first time? How's the plan going? Some setbacks for sure. This happens when he's alone and he doesn't have his high-tech, fancy Spider-Man suit that billionaire Tony Stark built for him. Peter thinks he isn't strong enough to get out of the building collapse without help, but if you've ever seen SES Who Dares Wins, you'll know that our mental strength often dictates our physical strength. Quite simply, we achieve things because we believe we can. You were not ready for this. Mental Tony's words come back to Peter in this moment, that if he's nothing without the suit, then he shouldn't have it. And that gives him the strength to get up. I understand. No one's around to see how impressive this is. What we do when no one is watching says as much about us as it does as what we do when we have an audience. He also makes it through the final act without his suit because the Spider-Man suit is just an enhancement. But you can't turn shiz into diamonds, you know what I mean? Is it? I don't know, that's what everyone's saying. Oh. It's only when he's cut off from his connections to Iron Man and his expensive tech that he saves the day, because it's not wealth or gadgets that maketh the man, or any of us. I mean, manners maketh the man, but we can always talk about Kingsman another day. I'll be right back. But Peter Parker only needs four things to achieve his goals when he's in his spring season of trying to be a superhero. Himself, the belief that he's capable of doing exceptional things, persistence, and his own resourcefulness. Strongest version of yourself, here's yourself. If every goal is a financial goal, but you don't have money, or connections right now, how will you use those four things instead to achieve your goal? Just because this is never going to work, there's no need to be negative. And then you can worry about hiring a teacher or buying an enhancement later, unless this goal is so important to you right now that you're willing to invest in a shortcut. As Peter Parker would say, I don't want to go, so I'm not going to. Don't squirrel on me yet. The first last thing is we can reunite in the next instalment if you join the mailing list for updates on new videos and podcasts from Save Like a Bear, because places like YouTube want to control your consumption for you, which means they don't always show you more from a creator even though you clicked like and stayed this far, because they're more interested in pushing you the latest viral thing. You can be the smartest guy in the room, the most qualified, and no one cares, unless you're flying around with a cane. The second last thing is that there is sometimes a third and fourth thing to wrap this all up, so hang tight. Thank you you guys for having me. If I was going to tenuously connect this to Tom Holland as well, because that's what we do here sometimes, as well as calling a spade a spade, perhaps a good example of how you can't extricate most of your life goals from your finances would be to look at Holly's sporting goals, which he shares openly. So when Holly shares his golfing progress on Instagram, is he just knocking a ball about willy nilly? I'm still not following. How many lemonades have you had? I'm still talking about golf, by the way. Well, actually, on more than one occasion, either he or his golf 
coaches. I, what, do you, what do you call a golfing, golfing, golfing teacher? They are a golf coach, right? This is the part where I reveal if it's not MMA, I know sweet FA about sports. On more than one occasion, either he or his golf coach have shared his progress because he obviously decided at some point that if this was an athletic goal for him, he has a choice. Does he try and get better for free with good old deliberate practice of what he already knows, which is perfectly valid if that's the cap on your spending plans at the moment? Or does he pay someone to steer that deliberate practice so that he can get better quicker? It's the equivalent choice of if my goal is to get stronger, do I go in my kitchen and start lifting a tin of baked beans because it's free in the sense that that's what I already have in the cupboard? Or do I go and buy a gym membership or a subscription to Chris Hemsworth Centre or hire a personal trainer? Uh. That was really hard to say. Can Chris Hemsworth please change his name, please? It's not that you can't achieve goals for free. It's just that quite often it takes longer. Your progress is slower. We're making progress now. And a large part of that really comes down to ourselves because we don't believe along that journey that we are capable of doing the exceptional thing. I'll give you about a 50 50 chance you're pretty awkward. So. But also, quite often, we're not actually implementing any deliberate practice. The kind of deliberate practice that if someone's coaching you, they sort of force you to do. <laughs> Paying that person quite often means that they're guiding you to go over the hardest parts over and over again. Let's try that again. Whereas when we're trying to achieve a goal by ourselves and we don't talk to anyone else about it, we tend to just gravitate towards the parts that are easiest and then we wonder why we're not getting the rewards but we're not really taking any risk or doing the really hard work. And that hard work doesn't have to be endless and endless hours. You could practice something in a very shallow way for 10 hours and not really make any progress. The hard work could actually be that you only spend half an hour on something but for that half an hour, the quality of what you're doing is is absolutely punishing to achieve. I always say hard work is good work and if it's uncomfortable and if you're having a hard time it means you're probably doing it right. Stop it. Get some help. My New York accent just came from working with my dialect coach really, pretty Ricky, white stallion, um, as I live and breathe. We love Ricky, he's the man. He uh, he was with me every day on set and for a couple months before we started shooting and we would just drill through the, through the accent and read the script every day and just put in the work. I work with an acting coach called Ben Perkins. I, I started training in boxing. Yep. Um, just because that was a nice way of training, remaining fit, but also learning a new skill. Like I love having studios pay for me to learn new things. So I was like, I need a boxing trainer, thanks. The almost final last thing is that there's always another segment after this. If anything from today felt like it might help get your finances down to a T, then please consider sharing this with a significant otter who might also get their finances down to a T as a result because our financial futures are important. Or speak up if you can't seem to get your finances down to a T so that I can get your question answered even if I can't answer it myself. Your hey, friends are in trouble. You're all alone. Your tech is missing. What are you going to do about it? Wait, half of these clips are from Spider-Man Far From Home, not Spider-Man Homecoming. I know, but who are you? I'm Don. Who are you? And where's Bear? I'm Edith. Bear's busy editing. Oh. One last thing. Is it? I mentioned journaling a lot on Save Like a Bear. I don't know if Spider-Man keeps a journal, but he is a scientist. And scientists like to test a hypothesis. So I, I also think you'll find the reason Peter Parker always wins in the end is because he's willing to constantly test and quite literally fall flat on his face to get there. And there was a video of me doing a backflip on a beach. And he was like, Listen, that's not you. There's no way that can... And I'm not the type of person to challenge. And I was like, well, just watch me. So I stood up, I had these stupid leather boots on. I tried to do a backflip and just broke my face. <laughs> And I've been a gymnast since I was a little kid, and it's been years since I haven't really landed one. I, I stood up, I thought I'd knock my teeth out, and the makeup artist was laughing at me, and then when she saw my face, it went from like, ah, oh, medic, medic! Uh, and then I went to Bogota with no one. They sent me to Bogota, no one spoke English. They kept trying to pull my trousers down at one point, and they, they were like, I was like, no, it's my nose. It's my nose that's broken. I actually like it better broken. It's time for another edition of What Is This Tom Fury? I can swear, can I? Where King Holly is going to demonstrate again that we're capable of more than we think. If you found today useful, don't forget to test what the like and subscribe button do and you'll want to catch the rest of the series next. You're good? You're good. How are you good? You turn me down? Go forth. Forth would be that way. Or if I point at the ceiling, I guess you could be... You know what, I just, I just hope you're on an upwards trajectory after today. You'll see Peter.